Whenever some great new feat of aerospace engineering is accomplished, like a new Mars rover, space telescope, car into space, etc., there will always, inevitably, be people expressing the opinion that spending billions on the space industry is a big waste of time and resources. Ah, think of all the poor people on Earth who could use that money. So today I thought I'd talk about why that's wrong from a completely economic standpoint. Even though I think learning about the secrets of the universe alone is reason enough to do all of it, it's understandable that some people might need a little bit more convincing. If you can't afford food on the table, I can see why spending $23 million on a toilet for astronauts seems like a waste of cash. I'm also going to be mainly covering NASA and the United States, because although much of this carries over to the European Space Agency, we spend comparatively less on space, and the inadequacy of our welfare states is generally less of a political issue. Additionally, you don't pay taxes for Elon Musk to launch his car into space. He's only wasting his own money, so that's not a problem for me. And with that, let's get some facts straight. In 2022, the NASA budget is about $24.8 billion, or 0.41% of the $6 trillion total. That's less than half a penny from every tax dollar you spend. At its peak in 1966, the NASA budget was still a mere 4.41% of the budget, or $47.3 billion adjusted for inflation. Every year, NASA's productive economic output more than doubles what it receives in its budget, generating $64.3 billion for the American economy, as well as another $7 billion in tax revenue from every state in America. Even North Dakota, despite only employing 18 people there? I have no idea how they managed to generate $3.2 million out of just those guys, but they did it! Okay, line go up on graph is all fine and dandy, but it's really hard to relate to that. And there's no proof that it benefits society as a whole. What does the NASA budget do for the ordinary American? On paper, 17,000 people work at NASA directly. That is, on the payroll by the federal government. That's everything from the accountants and bureaucrats to the astronauts and mission control. But when you include workers contracted by NASA, that figure jumps 305,000 jobs in the United States alone. NASA also routinely contracts companies in Europe and Asia to do research for them, but whose employees aren't included in official US government figures. Plus another 150,000 in private companies like SpaceX. That's just the scientific and technical jobs though, the men and women in white suits and black ties poring over blueprints. There are 700,000 more jobs also involved in non-scientific industries that NASA still relies on. Because NASA doesn't just need smart Ivy League 300 IQ white collar smarty pants, don't forget that there's an entire logistical operation to keep the NASA offices stocked with stationary and construction materials, clean, well lit, well ventilated, secured and with access to plumbing. A whole army of blue-collar workers, both directly and indirectly employed, to keep NASA's work going smoothly. For a pittance in the government budget, that's a lot of people and their dependents who get the rent paid. For people who don't work for NASA, or companies contracted by NASA, or companies contracted by contracted companies, or companies that NASA buy raw materials and office supplies from, how could all this wasteful spending affect you? One way or another, the work of NASA will find its way into your life, because every year since 1975, NASA has produced a document entitled Spin-Off, detailing over 350 technologies developed by NASA that have now been released to the public domain, commercialized and turned into useful products. These innovations range from new ways to manufacture goods to better construction materials for safer buildings. And those are fine, but here are some of the products that affect you directly that are a result from that half a percent of your taxes. 
NASA's program of satellite-based distress signals has saved approximately 30,000 lives worldwide since it was introduced in the early 80s. Needing to keep astronauts healthy in space led to dietary supplements, remote health monitoring and energy drinks. The heat shields used on the space shuttle have been handed over to the transport industry for faster planes, trains and automobiles. Devices used by NASA to detect gas leaks and electrical faults in rockets are now routinely used by industrial safety inspectors, no doubt saving countless people from injury or death. Material originally used for comfortable astronaut underwear is now used by the fashion industry for consumer clothing. The Mars rover led to hospital logistics robots, which reduced the burden on healthcare workers. Telescopes and space mirrors led to faster and more accurate eye surgery. The cameras once used to photograph the stars are now in your phone. NASA also uses satellites to predict hurricanes and give the USA time to not prepare and ask why Louisiana keeps getting destroyed every summer. The product NASA uses to de-ice its runways has been used by the rail industry to prevent delays to journeys in harsh conditions. Conditions, by the way, predicted by many of the 2000 plus weather and communications satellites continually scanning the sky and providing detailed weather reports for those below. NASA pioneered cheap and efficient solar panels, which is one of the best possible solutions to stopping our planet from being rendered unfit for habitation. So here, take a full penny, take two if that's all it costs. And no doubt many more things will come from NASA in the future if we keep the budget where it's at. Right now they're working on indoor farms to mass produce food to easily feed not only astronauts on Mars, but a growing global population too. All of these products inspired by NASA are made by companies employing many more people, from scientists to accountants to cleaning ladies, giving them all a wage to live on. But no company works alone. They buy raw materials and computers and sandwiches to stock the lunchroom, which come from other companies, and the whole process continues. Kickstarted because every American taxpayer gives 0.4% of their taxes to NASA. These are all the things that make our lives better, easier, and more comfortable. The examples I mentioned were all just from the 2012 edition, so if you want to read more, I have provided a link to the other years in the sources page. As much as Americans would like to think so, satisfying the American consumer is not the most important thing in the world. There are hundreds of millions of people in the third world who don't have access to healthcare, food, or even clean drinking water. Giving the NASA budget to the foreign aid budget would increase it by 50%, improving the lives of countless impoverished peoples, right? Ignoring the fact that cutting the NASA budget would cut off a vital innovating machine that we just discussed, there are many ways that NASA helps the third world that couldn't be accomplished by converting it to raw money and just sending it to Africa and Asia. Primarily, NASA pays for and operates satellites providing weather and imaging data to over 30 developing countries to help them monitor the effects of climate change. They can warn the Bangladeshi government of a potential flooding scenario up to eight days in advance, giving them time to shore up defences. They're tracking forest fires in Nepal, monitoring if weather might lead to crop failures in East Africa, and checking the health of rivers and lakes in drought-prone Indochina. Preventing the loss of food and livelihoods is far more useful to these countries than simply giving them money. There are the also previously discussed 2,000 US-owned communication satellites, allowing people in rural areas to access the internet without costly government infrastructure, especially in places routinely hit by natural disasters. Access to the internet makes everyone's life easier. This costs the US taxpayer about $2 million a day, but the economic boost of giving everyone on Earth Instant access to the internet whenever they're in a few miles of a cell tower is worth far more than this chump change in the budget. I gotta remind you that they do all of this, and going to space, and astronauts, and rockets, and all that other crap, on the same budget. Everyone is benefiting when your government spends money on science and technology. So space exploration and funding for science does improve the quality of people's lives even if they don't directly work in the industry. 
One last thing I want to touch on is the idea that budgets are mutually exclusive. They are not. You don't have to pick between space or the army or the welfare state. You can have all three if you want. At the height of the space race, when NASA's budget was 4.4% of the total spending by the US government, Congress was also initiating the largest expansion of welfare since the Great Depression. Medicare, Medicaid, the war on poverty, civil rights laws and racial integration, public broadcasting, access to education and food stamps, cutting poverty to the lowest levels in American history. It was also finding $843 billion to drop napalm on rice farmers, which just goes to show that you can fund basically anything so long as you tax rich people high enough. The year of the moon landing was also one of the busiest years of the Vietnam War, and the top marginal income tax rate in the United States at the time was 77%. The real leeches on society aren't the boffins at NASA expanding our knowledge of the universe and the economy, it's the clowns in governments and their wealthy lobbyists who aren't taxing and spending wisely. It's not for me to say what the tax rate in the USA should be, and raising it to 80% on the rich won't end poverty immediately or bring about a new space age, but you've got to be smart with the money that you raise. Which NASA is by the way. On their comparatively tiny budget over the past 10 years, they've operated three Mars rovers, landed on a comet, visited Pluto, photographed a black hole, discovered 2600 exoplanets, confirmed the existence of gravitational waves, built the largest space telescope and put it in orbit, sent a rocket to photograph the sun, uh, found water on two moons in the solar system, sent a probe to two dwarf planets, sustained 55 people to live in space, and sent a satellite to Jupiter, among many other things in their physics, climate, and engineering departments. And all this while considering themselves underfunded? So imagine what they could do with a whole penny of your tax dollar. Meanwhile, the US military and its behemoth budget couldn't even hold one city in Afghanistan for a few days. Social programs make up half of the US budget, and poverty is not, in fact, ended in the United States. It's about smart spending, not space spending. <laughs>